Now, Britain has warned Russia it could become a pariah state unless it helps international monitors get free access to the site where the Malaysian airliner came down. David Cameron said he'd be pushing other European partners to impose tougher sanctions on Moscow when leaders meet on Tuesday. But the crash scene itself is still a place of utter chaos. Let's go over now to Matt Fry, who's in eastern Ukraine. Matt. Well, Kathy, welcome back to Donetsk. 200 of the almost 300 bodies have now been recovered. They're being kept in refrigerated railway carriages not far from the actual crash site, guarded by the separatist rebels. The same people are also now guarding the flight recorder that was recovered just after the crash took place on Thursday. Now, what's really interesting is that a conversation emerged today, courtesy of the Ukrainian government, I must stress, where two rebel commanders were talking to each other just after the crash, saying the absolute priority was to recover the flight recorder on the express wishes, if not orders, of, quote, their comrades in Moscow. Interesting stuff. Death and diplomacy. There's been too much of one, too little of the other. And I warn you, there are some distressing images in my report. It is currently the world's biggest crime scene, but one that is still guarded by the suspected criminals. This is both an irony and an outrage. And so far, the countries that have lost citizens here have been powerless to do anything about it. The result has been a chaotic free-for-all in which anyone prepared to look will find something of interest, including us. So it's been four days since the plane was brought down. And let me show you something that I just found. This is a disused poultry farm. And look what that is. That is one of the wings of flight MH17. Lying by itself in the middle of this compound. And there's no one here apart from us. And this is a crucial piece of evidence. From one kind of precious evidence to another, this one is evidence of lives lived and lost. And it's in the middle of the debris that you find incredibly poignant and personal items. Look at this. Got the fluffy toy, but here, this is really just heartbreaking. It's a holiday diary in Dutch from a holiday that this family took last year, July 2013. Written by a child, guessing maybe 13, 14 years old. Look at the handwriting. Neat and earnest handwriting, full of hope and wonder. Nearby the holiday books taken by the Newcastle fans on their way to New Zealand. To the loved ones, these items are valuable beyond words. But this has also been a day of glaring absences. The bodies that were here yesterday have now been removed. This is how. Piled in the back of cattle trucks. The men at work didn't intend any disrespect, but to the relatives at home desperate to bury their dead, this must hurt deeply. The bodies have now been taken here, to refrigerated railway carriages, waiting for their next destination. Another absence is the flight recorder, recovered the day after the crash, taken away to an undisclosed location, the single most important piece of this puzzle held by the very people who have most to lose from it. Other absences, valuables. We found plenty of evidence of looting. Here, an empty camera case. There, a courier envelope, ripped open, now empty. But the absence that has made all the others possible is the absence of credible authority here, an authority that you would and should normally expect after a catastrophe like this. This is a global tragedy, with dead passengers from over a dozen countries. And yes, there are European monitors here in the form of the OSE. There are dozens of foreign journalists here, and of course, the local volunteers and forces. But where are the international diplomats? Where are the international institutions? Where are all the people that you'd expect to find around a crash site and a tragedy like this four days after the event? On the roadside, a flurry of freshly painted posters for our benefit, reflecting local views about who is really responsible here. Talk about adding insult to injury.
There are two things the relatives of the dead want more than anything now, but are unlikely to get any time soon. Dignity and justice. And we've just heard from Downing Street that two senior British police officers are now in Kiev, waiting, one assumes, to come here to eastern Ukraine once they get the permission and the insurances of safe passage.